give this a go. We should be fine this time. Right, we're up on the uh, yep. sky high one, but that'll do. Great, okay, let's get started. So, um, this is going to be a special uh, gravity uh, discussing with one of the founders uh, a product called Zato. Or Zato. Um, it's a fascinating little uh, Mac OS X application. And uh, I have with me, if you'd like to introduce himself, one of the uh, guys behind the project. Uh, could you tell me what uh, you know a little bit about the product and also what your involvement is, is with the service? Um, so the project started in May 2005 based on a PhD student uh, thesis. Who the PhD student is now uh, a chief architect at Zatu. Um, um, we launched the product in Switzerland in June 2006, okay. and now we have about over 2.4 million registered users in eight European countries. Wow, wow, so pretty successful then. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. So another question, um, the, the system is a, one of the applications, the application that you download is a Mac OS X application, that are basically for people who don't really understand what it does. It's a, a program that allows you to watch television stations uh, basically on your computer. So I suppose to go on from that, how do you go about making arrangements with these TV stations, for instance, like the BBC to allow uh, their programming? How how do you deal with what must be a nightmare in terms of licensing? Yeah, it, and it, it varies from country to country, from broadcaster to broadcasters. Uh, in some countries, uh, it's simpler. Um, we get a, a cable license, and then we broadcast uh, most of the... Uh, cable channels and in the uh, UK we rely on the copyright act to rebroadcast free to air channels ah, so there's nothing actually written in stone with the BBC it's just something that's is it a that's loophole right. in the broadcasting rule would that be able to be changed anytime soon is how's that work I uh, so it is the copyright act and I'm not that familiar with the law in the UK but it probably requires uh, a bill through the Parliament Okay. To so, change a lot, right? So, is, is there a hope then, in a way, that people see the service enough that they can see that there's value in it and possible, you know, the metrics behind it and the amount of people coming in and working out the times of the program being on? Is, is there something, you know, hopefully, for people to pick up on and and then maybe say, yeah, actually, it's not a bad idea. You can rebroadcast their stuff. Does that not open up for competitors as well? Uh, actually, BBC itself, uh, uh, I think this week announced that they are putting BBC One analog channel on BBC.co.uk and ITV also um, have uh, uh, ITV One, Two and Three on, on their uh, website. Um, the difference I think with us is that we aggregate all of those uh, channels in, in one player, so the viewing experience is more like uh, going to your TV. Right, you have all the channels uh, in one player, you can click from one to another instead of having to go um, from one, uh, 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 one player to another to, to switch channels. Right, right. So, taking on that uh, about the rebroadcasting thing, another question that I sort of got asked, I don't know if you've noticed uh, a new site just pop up in the last few days called Plurk. Uh, it seems to be going uh, you know, mad with the amount of people joining up with it. One of the questions that I had from one of the people there was, uh, in, the, in the US, providers like Comcast, Time Warner are considering net metering consumption-based billing. How will that affect Zatu's business plan? Uh, uh, so, net metering, meaning that uh, it will be a uh, usage-based right. payment on the, in the internet. Um, um, so, you know, it, I believe that in, in parts of Europe, uh, users are already paying for the amount of uh, bandwidth that they upload. In Belgium, for example, I heard similar um, service, similar uh, uh, payment plan is already in place. Right. And we still have a large number of uh, users in uh, Belgium. So I think as long as we provide uh, a good TV service that people want, they will be willing to pay for it. Right. Um, it, it fits into the, the nomadic lifestyle where people, you know, are not tethered to to the to the wall or have to watch TV in any one place they can watch live TV in the cafe or in a bus stop or whatever, anywhere else they have I, I think it's a fantastic service myself I think the application 
is the interface you've you know you've re been very restrained on the interface you've left it really light, yeah. light nice little channels on the side uh, you've right. recently yeah. pushed an update so you're obviously very you know uh, active on developing the product okay uh, right. one of the things that I wanted to ask you is that, that the uh, the Kodak that you actually use for mm -hmm. this the Kodak mm -hmm. it's uh, interesting to me because I've never heard of this Kodak before can you give me a bit more interest in uh, you know information about the Codec that you're using it's a standard MPEG-4 H.264 uh, for the video and AAC for the audio. Oh, okay. uh, we just have our own implementation of it. Ah, okay. I never heard of the right. name before. Is that a recent development or is it something that you've been working on for a while? Or? No. The, so H.264 is, is uh, part of Quick, Apple QuickTime, for No, example. I know that. It's just the name. Yeah. That, that I looked somewhere on a website or on another site. Somewhere it had a, a really strange name as to what the codec was called. I know it's H.264 and, and the size of it and, and the uh, 500 kps and whatever else. Um, right. But it had a strange name that I'd never seen before. Uh, maybe uh, do you recall what the name is? No, I didn't put it on my notes. <laughs> Typically me, I didn't put it on my notes, unfortunately. But I will get back to you on it. Right, yeah. another question. Yeah, I've it, really got... Go on, carry on. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question I've got is, uh, in terms of development, uh, how many members are there on the team? And do you start to think, and how do you start to think to scale a product like this? So we have about 27, 25 people in the development team now, including a, a number of interns. Um, and it is, as you know, peer-to-peer peer based, partly peer-to-peer peer based. So about 20 to 25 percent of the bandwidth we carry are contributed by the player, by the peers, um, and the rest uh, is, is is pretty uh, pretty much a, a CDN. So we are. As I, I believe Euro 08 is starting today or tomorrow, and, and that will be a, a big uh, test for us. <laughs> for the sheer amount yeah. of people on board, I guess. Yes. Right. So, do you see BitTorrent being the de facto, or do you think that you'll move to another sort of scaling technology, or do you think BitTorrent's not actually got there yet? Do you think there's a bit more way to go on, you know, for instance, uh, sorting out the latency and things like that? So there is a difference between our product and BitTorrent. Even though it's peer-to-peer, -peer, BitTorrent is uh, file sharing based. Right. Ours was designed from the beginning to do live streaming. So you know we don't we don't buffer uh, we we don't have parts of the uh, pieces of the files on your on your computer that you share with others. Instead, you know we we, we buffer very little, like two to five seconds of data before we we send it off again. So it, it's a different uh, protocol. Uh, we were designed from the beginning to take delay and uh, latency into account. Okay. So in that case, if you're not doing sort of a, a, if it's not sharing the bandwidth between users, then where, who's paying for the cost of the actual bandwidth in terms of serving it to me? I don't understand how that works. It, it, it is a peer to peer. It is a user are sharing the bandwidth, but the. The way of sharing is different from BitTorrent. Right? Uh, BitTorrent uh, copies stuff to your hard drive um, before sharing it with other people. We don't we don't put stuff in your hard drive. At the end of uh, watching uh, uh, Zatu, you don't have anything littering your hard drive. Um, so that the peer-to-peer -peer part covers about 20 25 percent of the bandwidth usage, and the rest we have to pay for it. So um, <clears throat> our largest uh, uh, a bill is for the content. We we pay. We have paid close to three million US dollar since our inception to now, just for content, and about half of that on bandwidth. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. talking about content, do you see uh, opportunities for, uh, for instance, people who are making shows on the internet that might not be, you know, big network brands? I, I noticed mm -hmm. there was something on there about regional. Uh, mm. programming. I'm interested in that. So, for instance, mm. here, here's me based in the UK, in England, mm. in the Midlands. How would mm -hmm. we, you know, how how would that work in the future? How can we get programming onto Zato for our, for our right. regional? Um, so, we are starting to look into that, and we pride ourselves from beginning to carry only high quality video, high production quality video. Um, so we, we so far haven't carried user generated content, but we are starting to carry a, a regional TV, and we are working with a, a magazine in in Switzerland uh, to create their own channel that is uh, available on Zatu only. Great. It's called Blick. Yeah, it's called Blick if you want to check it out. Oh, that's great. That's a good step yeah. forward. So yeah. I, I've just got to uh, round up very quickly. I wanted to say the picture quality is fantastic on it. The interface is nice and light. 
the regional broadcasting opportunities I think there's there's a whole group of things that can be concentrated on there for, for the social media aspects for right. camps for you know event structure uh, where yeah. you have people who are ve very well known in the community you might have like Robert Scoble you might have Gary Vaynerchuk you might have Kevin Rose and all of those people combined together in some sort of you know broadcast production quality uh, arrangement mm -hmm. could be very useful and Zato is very very snappy uh, do you yeah. think about maybe exporting it to the plat? I saw it on uh, Linux uh, on YouTube. Are you thinking about maybe uh, the Apple iPhone, the 3G iPhone in some way? So Zatu is available on Windows and Linux already. Right. Yeah. In addition to the Mac OS, um, the iPhone and uh, Nokia N95, you know, uh, uh, the Wii platform, Xbox, PS3, these are all very interesting. We are just uh, the resource edge to do that at this point. I hear you. I hear you. Listen, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. I can imagine you're very busy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.